In this lecture, we'll be discussing about one of the important concepts given by Pierre Bourdieu, that is the concept of field. His concept is an amalgam of theoretical concepts and also empirical research. So before we begin to understand what a field is according to Bodo, we'll understand what a habitus is. I've already made a lecture on this, we'll just quickly revise. So habitus is the cognitive system of structures, that is, the ways of thinking, acting and feeling. What one's thoughts are, one's beliefs are, interests and tastes are, depends on the habitus. So, it is the internal representation of the external structure that we live in. And it happens because we internalize a few things through our primary socialization. For example, our family teaches us to give respect to elders. And as we grow up, we internalize it. And it happens in an involuntary way. Even when we do not realize it, we do it. Like paying respects to our elders. So this is what is habitus is. And what is a field then? So field is a network of relations which exists apart from the individual will and the consciousness. Again, because we internalize so many things during our socialization process, so the network of relations, they exist apart from our consciousness. So these are not just interactions or ties among the individuals, but this network could also be among the people. Here we are going to change the word people with agents because this is what Bodu called them. And also the institutions which are constrained by this field. So what could be this field? It could be the field of religion, education, art and so on. Coming to social fields. So he said that this is a macro concept which represents or which acts like an entry point to understand his other concepts. So once we understand what field is, it becomes very easy, simple to understand the other concepts that are given by him. When there is an interaction among the agents of society which determines their daily life. So what could be some of the types of interactions which determines the daily life of people it could be discussions negotiations conflicts etc so we have to find the source of that interaction where did that discussion come from where did this conflict come from so this can be determined by finding the social space from where it was produced and this can be further divided into social fields now you can look in this uh, diagram, look at it and you can understand that there is a field which is a social setting and there are individuals with different habitus. That means they have different ways of thinking, ways of speaking and there are also some rules within the field. The rules which are determined by what? By the same institution perhaps. We can understand this by an example. For example, if you live in a joint family, there are certain rules in the family. So you eat at a particular time, you eat in a particular manner, you will eat a particular type of dish also. Why? Because that is the setting of your joint family. That is the rule that is there to eat at a particular time, to eat in a particular way and to eat with the people around you. In the same way, fields can be of another institution, it could be the field of an art, religion, economy and so on. Each of these fields, they have different rules and different practices which governs the individuals. And again, we can take the example of say you're working in a bank. The bank has different rules. You will not go to the bank and while you're doing your work, you will have to think of a lot of things. A lot of rules that are there you cannot just go there and kill your time you have to work you have to sit in a way you have to dress up in a way you have to talk in a certain way so this is what is uh, this is what the rules are and that is how they govern the individuals now under these fields sub fields can also exist and these rules which are there which are 
related to these fields and subfields they these are known as field specific rules which change when the fields change that is we understood that by the example of our family setting and the setting of an institution which is formal in nature now the rules or doxa as bodu called them they are not always stated for example when i said that in a joint family setting you have to probably eat your dinner by 7 pm you will not find it written anywhere in your home why and even then everybody follows it why because it is mutually recognized and understood maybe your uh, great grandfather said it then your grandfather followed it your father followed it and you are following it why because it is mutually recognized and it is understood that yes this is the rule of this house of uh, this setting of this field and we have to follow it now these are internalized by the agents by agents i mean the people and it becomes involuntary even when you do not know it you will do it because it is it does not always carry your consciousness and your will to do it but because you have internalized it because you were repeatedly told that yes you have to eat by 7 pm yes you have to eat with all the members of the family yes you have to dress in a certain way when you are sitting at the dining table and you have to speak in a certain way so these all the things they are internalized by you now the rules they vary with social fields and there is no one universal rule for example if we take the example of 10 joint families maybe they are not doing what you are doing even when it is the same structure the same joint family probably some of them do not mind they you can eat in your room you can eat whenever you want you do not need to eat with everybody and the the rules differ with the different social fields now coming to the nature of these fields we know that these fields keep changing but bodu said that they are autonomous or rather relatively autonomous by relatively i mean when you compare two social fields they can be autonomous in a way that fields are influenced by the social space around them they are also influenced by what external factors for example politics competition let us take the example of the bank that we talked about you are doing what you are doing at your work because there are certain rules some of them are stated some of them are not stated but there is also an influence of external factors for example competition between two employees you will be giving your best because you want to succeed and you want to do better than your peers so there are a lot of external factors as well which govern the these fields he said that the field is also a field of struggles that is he said that field is also a locus of struggle where there is so much influence from external factors there is a daily struggle but the boundaries of social fields are not fixed rather they are flexible for example if someone new comes to your family and challenges this age long tradition of eating dinner all together or praying before dinner or anything like that so this can be challenged and if someone gets convinced with it so the boundary of the social field it can be changed that means it is not fixed but rather flexible in nature let us discuss some questions now question number 1 according to bodu another field can have its impact on the formal field if it can have its impact on the formal field formal field only if the effect of the formal field ends so when the effect ends only then a new field can have its impact question number 2 fields are autonomous because they are autonomous because each field has its own rules there is no single rule that can be present or that is present in every field therefore they are relatively autonomous as bodu called them so i hope you got the lecture thank you for